Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial talking about this polygon animation. Although this is a very basic setup in animation nodes, it's not something that you can do with geometry nodes and I don't think it will be doable anytime in the short term for various reasons. Before I start, I want to mention that recently I started a server for discussion of animation nodes and geometry nodes and potentially other things as well. If you have questions, ideas and interests uh, feel free to join and discuss your thoughts. The link is provided in the description. So let's start. So here we're in animation nodes and we can start, technically speaking, we can start with any kind of mesh. You can have a building or other things. And uh, animation nodes, however, does not contain a lot of uh, procedural mesh, but it still provides some procedural mesh. And there is a circle mesh, which I really like. And we, there is no direct view, so let's take the object mesh output. So let's create this circle mesh, and we get our circle mesh. This is a procedure you can increase, you can change the loop. So let's go to the wireframe mode, so we can see how can we actually change this. So if you have this radio loop, so it's basically the vertices and number on the outer part, but we also have the inner loop, so that you can actually create all this kind of triangle fan. This is this mesh manipulation is actually more advanced than the geometry node circle mesh because you can c control the inner loop subdivision and many other things. There is also other features that you can try to either merge start and end, or you can actually control these angles so that you can have a half a circle or full circles. You can also determine the inner radius. So that's maybe you don't want to have a circle, but rather a ring. Uh, these are all kinds of things that you can potentially do with this node. But I think uh, we are just going to start with the traditional circle. And you can increase the outer radius to increase the size. So next step is actually to offset all these kind of polygons. There are many different ways. For example, there is a separate polygon mode, uh, node. And then we can manipulate all these kind of vertices. In this case, I don't recommend you to do this. Uh, let's take these. There is a node that's readily made for us to do this kind of animation, which is called the offset polygons. Once you use these offset polygons, uh, it will automatically separate all these kind of polygons from the mesh. So it does not look like anything, but we will see uh, how it works later. So talking about the animation I want, so let's first translate everything upwards. And you can see uh, the entire whole mesh has been translated upwards because we're not defining the fourth. So the fourth is kind of very tricky functions. And there are many different ways to interpret it or define that information. Here, I'm just going to create a empty and I named it as controller, but it, you can name that as everything, it's just an empty, okay? And I'm going to use a node which is called object controller fourth, and the select our empties, plug that into fourth, and now you can see how it actually affects the entire stuff. We can change that to matcap, so you can see everything's a little bit different, yes. So basically, in this particular case, the fourth is an area. So if you're in the region, so within, so there is a scale of uh, zero to one. If you're 100% within this area, or you're zero percent within area, which is your, which means you're outside the areas. As you can see in these examples, outside this entire ring of the empty. There is no effect of translation, but the inside we have a full scale translation, which is going upwards. And on the edges, because it's between zero and two one, so you have only kind of gradient. And this is how it works. I've made a tutorial talking about the fourth. Um, if you would like to know the detail, you can check that link. But in this case, just to tell you that you can increase the fifth or fourth width, so that the gradation has been spread it out. So more soft animation that you can observe in this case. So now we tr have done a basic translation upwards. We can also try to move the scales down, make that to zero. So that's the center part actually has been disappeared. 
So we made this kind of transition, which is already good enough. Next step is talking a little bit about the rotations. So if I rotate, if I directly transform the rotations and just increase the values, and you can see everything is rotating towards the right. Okay, because it's following the global axis. So in this case, the way to change that to local axis is there is two ways. One is to hit U. Then you goes to the local axis and the control pivots. So basically they advance the setting. Uh, the other is if you hit end, there is also a panel which is called advanced setting. They basically do this completely the same thing. It, uh, so it's kind of completely personal preference whether you would like to use U or N, but essentially they are the same. Sometimes I just use U because it's easier. Okay, so once we have done that, so we can see the transformation of local axis. Um, different object has been di rotated differently. It actually forms kind of ring. It looks kind of very interesting. So it depends on how you actually would like to manipulate them. Eventually, you can take a 180 degree, so you can actually see how it looks. Uh, one thing I want to remind you is you don't necessarily use one fourth to manipulate all three parameters. It's completely possible that I use I use a another fourth which may have contains a little bit of fourth width to control the scale or less fourth width so that the animation order will be delayed or I don't know so you can test it by yourself but it can be very interesting so previously if the scale is is on the first is controlled by the first of all everything has been disappeared and that all this kind of uh, location and the rotation transform is not very obvious but if we delayed the second of all by decreasing this fourth width so now before the scale turns to zero which means the polygon will disappear we can see more this kind of a transform animation more clearly so these are all the things that you can potentially do and uh, I'm not going to details about all this kind of tiny variations you can try by yourself in your free time the next topic is talking about the color the color is actually um, probably a little bit advanced topic um, so whatever we are trying to do here is to put this fourth as I explained in this particular case the fourth is the area and all the evaluation occurs automatically with this offset polygons node and a similar kind of thing also occur with other nodes like offset matrices that you also plug a fourth but there, if you try to search there is no such a node which is called offset color it just does not happen so we need to use the fourth but we also need to manipulate the color in that case there is a, another method to evaluate fourth which is called evaluate fourth node in this case it's a kind of more menu that you have to define the location or matrix so let's start with the locations by hitting these buttons we're going to use the list which means we'll transform the location input into a plural form so we can receive the plural why do we need the uh, locations? I would like to know the polygon center of each polygon. Okay. So the polygon center is a part of the information within this mesh. There is a node which is called a poly, uh, mesh info node. It can extract as much information from the mesh as possible. For example, the vertex uh, the vertices and the vertex normal polygon centers, polygon normals. Um, I think most cases what really matters uh, is the vertex locations and the polygon centers so in this case I'm just going to put these polygon centers in place and uh, we can use either fourth but I'm going to, I think I'm going to use the first fourth so now we are outputting a strength as I explained earlier the fourth in this case is defining whether your object or polygon is within inside of this range Okay, so 100% within the range or 0% within the range. So basically this is strength um, range from 0 to 1. And in most cases this is true. There are, specific, there are certain exceptions, but I don't think it's 
really matters to our to our discussion I don't want to go too much detail in this case we can use mixed color and put the strength into factors so we can mix two colors uh, here I'm just going to take the white and the black and I will tell you the reason so later talking about how to manipulate the color of polygons there is a node which is called a vertex color so we can insert the vertex color layer and we plug the results into the color input so there will so once you put the color into color there will be several options like a loop vertex polygons we are evaluating the polygon centers so we are changing the polygon color basically we're trying to do is each polygon has a distinctive color instead of each vertices have a distinctive one then we can start to manipulate the shader so let's first it goes to the uh, rendering view uh, rendering view and it goes to the shader editor select our target objects and let's add a material so you do not see anything so you can go to the view and uh, frame all so that you can see our principal BSDF and the material output. Here, the material just looks very ugly and you can change the color, but it's, it does not really matter in this case. It's kind of grayish because of the wood shadings. You can also manipulate the wood shader. So let's just turn the, this background to dark. It goes to the objects. And we can also turn off the overlay. So everything is dark, we do not see anything. It's just the, <laughs> it's just a bad um, in this case uh, we can actually take the vertex color and if I directly plug this vertex color to the emission you do not really select anything if you only have one vertex color and immediately just uh, see this how this controller is affecting our object so initially it's emitting white light we can even view with the balloon so you can increase the emission so you, you see the balloon and then let's control the controller it, by expanding that it becomes black and it completely disappeared from the darkness so we can turn off the overlays so this is animation that we're looking so if you would like to if you want the everything is becomes opposite like the black at the end so white in the center so you can use a invert node but you can also change in our mixed color so let's change our in our mixed color so now it becomes opposite. Previously, uh, I mentioned that we're using black and white color here. Uh, it's because we can use a single color to do single black and white to do many different kind of things. Black, uh, black in shader means zero, white means one. There is a mix RGB node that you can plug this that into fa uh, factor. So now we have the factor zero to one, okay? So we can define the color using this mix color. So let's take that to red. So we have the red in center and you can use the color ramp as well. So instead of manipulate everything within the animation nodes, it's kind of more intuitive if we directly manipulate everything within shader nodes. So more customizability. After all, it's still shader nodes, which is designed for shader manipulation. Another important thing I want you to know is you don't necessarily to actually uh, manipulate it only just the, the emission you can put this factor into everything into everything that you can potentially think so that you may put, put that to metallic you can put that to roughness you can put that to base color so there are many different choices you can potentially do And in this case, let's decrease the saturation a little bit so it emits more white and let's increase the strength. So let's see our controller. So initially everything is just dark, but then it's increased. So you do realize when our object is at zero, so let's decrease the size of controller to zero. We still have all this kind of animation being done. So we want to complete the zero or complete darkness at the 
at the beginning of this entire whole thing. So you can actually take the offset maybe down to negative one. So basically half of the fourth width, 2.74 divided by two, then it's completely darkness. And uh, can we actually increase the size? Yes. By increasing the size, we have everything being done. There is a kind of another way that you can do this because I feel like uh, if you're trying to change the offset, it's kind of too intensive. Another method uh, is to use the mix fourth. So our animation starts from the 1 to 100. I'm first going to take the mix fourth and then I'm going to take a time info and take a map range. So we have the start at the end. We can define the impacts maximum as the 100. Or actually, let's take that to 50. Once we put this value into the constant of fourth, it will basically, and let's take a multiply. You can use a multiply or you can use some. Let's use multiply. So at the first frame, we absolutely do not see anything. Okay, uh, let's take the minimum to one. And by increasing this animation, we can see how this fold has been changed. And uh, then let's start to animate our empties. So something like that. You can also change all this kind of color. There's many different things that you can potentially do. Um, but I think I would this tutorial will stop here. Finally, it's your creativity, what you can do with this animation. Oh. Uh, another thing I want to remind you, there is also other modes like the direction mode that if you go to the empties, so instead of uh, going, yeah, so this is how it looks. Let's take the Y actually. So this car transition. So there is one thing that I forgot to mention is that earlier at the most beginning I've mentioned that you can use either procedural mesh that you you can directly generate from animation nodes or you can use a customized mesh for example a building a whatever other things that you can think of in such a kind of case uh, in such kind of case for example I generated a cube and let's add a several uh, subdivision surface modifier, so let's uh, generate a sphere. In that case, how should I actually get a cube? Because I don't have a cube mesh like the circle mesh. It's not a thing, it's not a, a procedural mesh included in animation nodes. So in this case, uh, there is a node which is called object mesh data node. And you plug this mesh node instead and select our cubes. Then immediately you get our cubes and you go to the first frame, we have a cube but earlier we made a modifier, make it into sphere. So in this case, you just uh, use a modifier. But be aware that I spent one tutorial specifically talking about the issue of this node. That uh, uh, once you add this use modifier, the best uh, workaround to solve all this kind of issue is to use this workspace and move that away from the viewport. What I mean to say is never try to disable your original cube. You need to leave that visible so never try to disable these uh, camera icons or disable the collection that include that or disable this screen icon never do that this is currently a limitation it might be solved in the future i'm not sure yet so uh, another thing is I, I you probably realize that this cube is not being smooth shading and you try to shade smooth and you find it's not working uh, in that case uh, you try to use shade smooth 
So when you generate object from animation node, usually it works. In this case, it does not work. The reason is that once you put that into the offset polygons, you are separating polygons automatically. So even if it looks like they are, the, the vertices are attaching to each other, it, they are not. It's just an overlapping vertices in which you can actually hit M and merge by distance. But of course, it does not work. In this case, there is a procedural way which really solve the problem is to use the wield modifier, which merge by distance using modifier. There is a last thing I would like to mention. Earlier, I mentioned that you can put the scales after these polygons. But the, here is actually a tricky part that I've, this is actually a, mis, a tiny mistake. So once you are offsetting the polygons, the polygon center has been changed, which means the evaluation point has been changed as well. Uh, in that case, if you're using wh whichever, even if you're using the same object, the control of all, the result will be a little bit different. The, the timing of action will be a little bit different. So in that case, the best option is always put the translation after anything. So you can put the, it will be recommended if you put the skills at the front so that you are not changing the polygon center. So this is a fix to all this kind of issue if you find, oh, my object is delayed abnormally. So this is the solution. And put the polygons back, which solves the problem. So this is it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.